Good evening everyone, this is 12th October and I am Madhusudan Raj, your host for today. This is uh, my another economic analysis where I am going to discuss uh, Narendra Modi's newly launched this Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, this so-called clean, clean India mission. So what I want to do is, you know, I want to analyze this scheme into two parts. First, I'll tell you what the scheme is, and then I'll say that what we actually need to do to uh, clean our country, clean India, because whether Narendra Modi's you know campaign is actually going to result into something fruitful or not. And as you will see, if you understand economics and you understand the uh, political nature of the scheme itself, then you will realize this bureaucracy itself then you will realize that it is not going to kind of achieve these stated goals so then i will discuss you know very briefly what actually we need to do to make this you know country clean because obviously i agree that uh, uh, india should be clean india in this sense the whole country should be clean right i believe in hygiene and health and everything uh, the only thing I, I know that pollution is a real problem, uncleanliness is a real problem. Where I back to differ with all this government scheme is that government is not the answer of all this you know, all these problems. See, you have one problem that doesn't necessarily mean that government is the answer. There are also alternative ways in which we can fulfill these ends alternative ways in which we can make this country clean. The only problem right now is that uh, not many people know about these alternatives and uh, these alternatives are politically incorrect ideas you know because governments will not lie to give away their power so that's the only problem so let's first see uh, what this uh, clean india campaign is so on 2nd october on the mahatma gandhi's 150th birth anniversary is coming in 2019 so he was saying that by that time we should make India clean. Narendra Modi launched this particular mission on 2nd October on Bapu's birthday and he was saying that because uh, you know Mahatma Gandhi uh, he was very much you know into cleanliness and he used to clean his own toilet etc he believed in hygiene and cleanliness doing on his own so that's why Narendra Modi is kind of telling all of us to do the same thing now uh, first of all, the big difference between what Mahatma Gandhi was doing and what Narendra Modi is doing is that Mahatma Gandhi was doing everything voluntarily on his own and he was not forcing anybody else to get involved into this cleanliness campaign of his. He was just leading by example. He was cleaning his toilet and he was cleaning his home every day. Not like this drama and all this, you know, political theater of Narendra Modi where you know, on one particular day on 2nd October, he will take a broomstick into his hand and just for taking some photographs, go in a, on a road where there is nothing, no filth and there is no uncleanliness, there is no kind of trash. He will just, you know, uh, sweep the broom for a couple of times, take a couple of pictures and, you know, smash you know kind of post it everywhere on twitter account facebook and newspaper and show as if you know he's really involved with that i i want to say that mahatma gandhi was a very different thing because he was doing it every day right and he was not forcing anybody else you know narendra modi and his bureaucracy is forcing people people were forced on that day to clean the thing, basically clean the public premises, right? I know because I was forced to get involved into that thing. I was forced because the whole bureaucracy is working. You know, be, you know, they in fact the government bureaucracy issued issued a circular that if if anybody is not getting involved with this thing, then they will be kind of punished. And many of the school teachers, for example, in my city were suspended. And many of many of the you know, teachers also kind of they were also their their pay salary was also blocked. They raised also blocked by the uh, uh, municipal the administration, the school board, you know, officers. So they were forcing everybody. Mahatma Gandhi was not forcing anybody. You see, this is a voluntary work, and you can you know it's it's a force and voluntary is two poles apart, opposite ideologies. So Gandhi was very different, Narendra Modi is a dictator, so basically what he's doing is he's forcing everybody, he forced everybody on that. And it was just one day show, right, 
just one day just publicity marketing getting election winning election and re-elections and voting that's what Narendra Modi is all about it's nothing concrete okay after that day was over there was no cleanliness camp and nothing was going on in fact what people are doing is you know these guys are going to spend hell lot of money on this thing uh, I am reading somewhere is that uh, the Modi government is going to spend something like 2 lakh 50 crore rupees on this clean India mission yeah imagine 2 lakh 50 crore rupees and on what they are saying that they are mainly going to build toilets and studies after studies are showing that building toilets is not going to help anyone building toilet is not going to result into hygiene It's not going to result into cleanliness despite that these guys going to spend lakhs and crores of rupees on building toilets which definitely nobody is going to actually use so just like what the previous governments were doing they were also doing the same thing he's also doing the same thing he's just doing it with more fanfare because he knows you know good marketing and has a good backup team for you know marketing and public relations and everything nothing more than that that's it uh, <clears throat> Pranav Mukherjee the the president is also going crazy and he's saying that Pranab Mukherjee, President Pranab urges citizens to do uh, to make cleanliness a national pressure. Now do we uh, do we have only this work to do in our life that we make it our, our passion, cleanliness? <laughs> Don't we have anything else to do in our life? Right? Do we have to keep you know things clean all the time? What the heck the government is doing, who is in all? The most important fact I just want to talk about right now, see, uh, then President Pranam Mukherjee also said this thing that government alone cannot make India clean. He's saying that calling upon all Indians to get involved in this Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, President Pranam Mukherjee on Thursday said the government alone cannot do it without people's involvement. Well, if people's involvement is necessary and if government cannot do it on their own, then what is the need of the government itself? Right, see. <clears throat> I am a taxpayer. I'm sure you are also a taxpayer. So we are taxpayers. We are already paying taxes to the government bureaucrats to keep this country clean. And these guys, they are not doing their work. They are, you know, basically, you know, you know, cheating us. You know, principal agent problem. They are the ones who is who is not doing their work. They cannot do their work because there's a systems failure. And then they are telling us. That you pay taxes also, right? With, from which we get our fat, you know, salary checks for running all this, you know, clean India mission bureaucracies. And when we fail, they blame us and they tell us that because Indian people don't have good habits, that's why this country is not clean. So he's saying that uh, Indians are also need to get involved into this mission. So if people are only going to clean this country, then what is the need of the government? Simply let's abolish the government. And we, we people will take care of, you know, our own premises. We don't need you guys. And if you cannot do your work properly, then we are going to fire you, right? Basically, that's what you will do. So what you will do, for example, if the homemade who is coming in your home to clean your house, if he tells you something like this, if he tells you that he alone cannot clean your home, despite you giving him or her the salary, she turns back and tells you that she cannot clean the home on her own. So she requires your help also to clean the home. How would you feel? I'm sure definitely the very moment you are going to fire that home. You will immediately fire the guy. So similarly, we need to fire the whole government system. See, it's not about changing prime minister or one party from another. It's about the government, this apparatus itself. It's the bureaucracy itself. It cannot work. Even after you know spending crores and crores of taxpayers' money, our money, they are telling us that they cannot do it and they require our involvement. Well, if our involvement is required, then we will figure out, right? We will hire some private company who is going to do the job in a much better way than what the government is doing. So stop getting all these salaries and everything, shut in all this bureaucracy, and that's it. Right? But they are never going to do that. Right? They will all blame us. They will say that you guys need to get involved. So it's like a double whammy, you know, uh, blow on our face. We pay the tax also and then ultimately we will also, you know, we will be forced to basically clean this country. Right? So that is, you know, what you call in Hindi, you know, Chori Upar Se It's It's like that. Right? Anyways, and you know, 
Uh, as I said, the reports are already saying that what these guys are going to do. Modi is saying that they are going to build hundred million toilets, and what the scheme and and what the evidence is saying. This Swachh Bharat mission would place overwhelming emphasis on constructing toilets with plans afford to build over 100 million of them in rural areas alone in, ne in the next five years. But if prior experience, and, and I'll listen to me carefully, but if prior experience is anything to go by, many of them would either not be built or not used. So these 100 million toilets are not going to be built means where the money is going, money is going in the pockets of the bureaucrats, the government servants. You know, they call themselves servants, but they are not servants, they are our masters. Okay, unofficial studies like the squad survey, which was done in five northern states, show that in the in at least 40% of households with a newly built toilet, a member of the family was still defecating in the open. Cultural condition and tradition were some of the reasons for poor adoption. The survey found so just going to make these toilets is not going to help anyone. And then big spending. The government doesn't seem to have learned anything from the previous 30 years of dysfunctional investment. Okay, so it doesn't matter, they spend a lot of money and nothing comes out of that. Okay, even after I think 68 years of independence, government cannot clean this country. And they are telling us that we need to get involved. We don't need you, just get out. Okay, constructing toilet has become a business. Okay, so many companies are going to get lucrative contracts from the Modi government. Narendra Modi is the fastest leader, remember. So his crony capitalist friend, his corporatist friends like Adani and Ambani and Taras and Billas are going to get lucrative you know, contracts for all these toilets and everything. They are going to get filthy rich and India is not going to become clean in any case. Right? Constructing, uh, constructing toilets has become business, says Kamalkar of the community-led toilet sanitation initiative. He points to Nepal and Bangladesh which have had a measure of success without spending so much money as better models. So even Nepal and Bangladesh is doing better without spending so much of money in terms of hygiene and cleanliness etc. So these guys are just going to blow a lot of taxpayers money and in the end will come and tell us that well we cannot do it alone so you need to get involved. Right? Anyway so what I was saying is that uh, what is the real solution then? Okay we have to understand that which areas of this country are basically clean. You see that we are not focusing on the real issue over here. See, you and I, my dear viewer, we are never going to keep our own homes dirty. Do we keep our homes dirty? No. Do people keep their homes dirty? Do people keep their backyard dirty? Do people keep their, you know, waranda and front yards, you know, dirty? Do, do, do not people, you know, clean their own premises? And the places which are dirty are basically streets, public places, roads, nooks and crannies all these areas are basically dirty open areas right we keep our homes clean why we keep our homes clean because it is our private property you see that's the basic human nature that we will take care of only those resources which are owned by us which is our private property see the way in which we take care of our car and our bike and our mobile phones and our home right well, in a similar way, we will take care of all these other areas also if they are private. Right now, the areas which are dirty are all basically owned by the government, what you call the public property. Like roads is owned by the government, streets are owned by the government, public parks are owned by the government. All the areas which are dirty are all owned by the government. You will never find any you know, corporate office dirty. Do you find any corporate office dirty? No, we all clean them. Why? Because we are the owner, and that's basic human nature. See, the whole idea that we, you know, we should uh, kind of make this clean like national passion is all is all stupid utopian talk. That is never going to happen. People will never, you know, have any kind of belongingness if they don't own something. They'll never keep it clean. They're never going to, you know, clean the roads. You take thousand years or one like here. Human nature is not going to change like that. What is in human nature is ownership. So that means the areas where we have problems are all basically public property areas. Roads, streets, public parks, public hospitals, or pub, all the resources which are owned by the government. So what is the answer then? See, because 
nobody bothers about the public property government we think we have assigned this work to the government but they are themselves telling the president himself is telling that they cannot do it alone right they're not going to bother about it right they're not going to keep those things clean so that means that the problem is not with you know kind of you know any kind of uh, national passion or whatever the problem is that because government is not the ultimate owner of all these resources so that's why they don't take care of those property they know that they are in power only for five years or for ten years so they will make the most money when they are in power right whatever corruption they will do and make the most money out of it and get out they'll never you know worry about the capital value of the resource they will never worry about keeping the resource intact for the future use they will use it in the present, exploit it in the present, that's it. They're not, never going to work because they know that once they're out of the power, it's not their business. So it's an ownership issue. Cleanliness is an ownership issue. Right now, public ownership is the problem. Wherever we have private ownership, wherever we have private property rights, there is no cleanliness problem. We keep our homes clean. So then what is the solution? The solution is simply to privatize everything. That's it. Privatize the roads, privatize the streets, privatize all the public parks, privatize all the public properties. Right? And one source is, for example, privatize the rivers, Ganga, for example. Why Ganga is unclean? Because government is the owner of Ganga, it's the natural resource. Government owns all the natural resources in this country. And the government owners are allowing people to dump all kind of trash into Ganga. Right. Suppose if you are the owner of Ganga, you are the private owner of Ganga River, then would you allow anybody to throw trash like that, dump dead bodies like that in the Ganga River? You will not allow. Right? And even if you will allow, you will take a very hefty, hefty price for that. And that will reduce all the pollution and uncleanliness and people dumping all kind of stuff into that. Right now, everybody does that because it is what you call public property. People will damage public property because they don't have that ownership, that belongingness with that. They don't care for it. Okay? So what we need to do, as I said, if these roads are private, if the streets are private, everything is private, nobody will dare dump anything onto those roads and onto those streets because the private road owners, they will never allow these people. They will find them. There will be the a price of making all these things dirty. Now, I cannot explain to you right now in this video analysis that how we are going to privatize roads and highways and all the public property. There is a vast amount of literature available on that, right? Uh, that you can go and visit, let's say, Mises.org, Mises Institute's website, for example, and start from there. You can read, for example, Walter Block's book, Privatizing Roads and Highways, right? And he's also coming up with... Uh, Another book, privatizing rivers and oceans and lakes, etc. If all these are private properties, then nobody will dare make it unclean. Nobody will dare throw any trash on it. Because they will be, you know, charged. They will be sued in the court and they'll have to probably go to jail and, you know, have a fine will be there. Right? So we can remove all these, you know, we can make India clean by privatizing the public property. As I said, this solution is basically politically incorrect. Politicians will never give up their power. Privatizing means government, we have to dismantle the government. Government size will, you know, shrink and ultimately it will become zero. They will not allow that. And that's the real problem. So as long as we are not going to privatize all this public property, you know, this making India clean will be a pipe dream only. So, all right, thank you very much for watching me for today. I will be, you know, back soon again with you. Goodbye.